All right, so when I'm graphing, just a quick review of linear inequalities. So I know that they're linear, so they're all going to be in the y mx plus b form. So now the direction and the type of inequality symbol that I have determines what the graph looks like specifically. Um, so when I think about it having a solid line or a dashed line, and when I think about shading above and shading below, I'm going to add in the correct inequalities. So if I'm shading above, above would imply greater. So if I'm shading above, it's going to be y is greater than mx plus b. Um, if I'm shading below, that's going to be less than. So y is less than mx plus b. So the, sh the shading comes about from the direction of the sign. So if I shade above, it's greater than. If I shade below, it's less than. So then I need to think about a solid line versus a dashed line. So when we graphed um, inequalities on a number line, we showed if it was or equal to or not or equal to by an open or a closed circle. So a closed circle is going to be similar to the idea of a solid line, meaning that the line is included, just like a closed circle meant the point was included. So greater than or equal to and less than or equal to are going to be solid lines. And I kind of remember that too when I graph y equals mx plus b. So when my sign is equal to, I make my points and then I connect them with a solid line. So that's where that or equal to is going to come into play. So a dashed line is going to occur when it's just greater than or less than. It is not equal to. So that is going to be like a boundary. Um, so this is going to look like a solid line. And if it's greater than or equal to, I would shade above. And this is also going to be a solid line, but it's less than or equal to, so I would shade below. This is going to be a dashed line because it's not or equal to, it's just y is greater than. So that's my boundary line, and I would shade above. And this is going to be a dashed line, and it's less than, not less than or equal to, so I shade below. Um, so the process of putting the points on the line is going to be the exact same as if I were graphing y equals mx plus b. But then what I do with my solid or dashed line to connect those points and where I shade, which includes all the solutions, depends on that inequality sign. So let's just do some quick practice. This is review of, you did this in eighth grade. We spent a little time reviewing it. But we're going to go through the same process of graphing. So are they in slope-intercept form? So I noticed that number one and number two are both in slope-intercept form. So now I'm going to graph my y-intercept. So in this case, my y-intercept is at negative three. So I'm going to graph a y-intercept of negative three. And my slope is negative one over one. So I'm going to fall one, run right one, fall one, run right one. Or I could rise one and go left one. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue this pattern all the way across because I know I'm going to be shading one half of the graph. All right, so now I have to think about is it a solid or a dashed line? So I need to know do I connect the points or is it just a boundary? And then am I going to shade above or below to represent the solutions? So in this case, it's a greater than or equal to. So or equal to means it's going to be a solid line because it's an equation and it's an inequality put together. And so then I put my pencil on my y-intercept and I think about y's that are greater than that value are up here. So that means that all of these are solutions. So by shading, I'm showing every solution to that line. And I could double check. So I could take a point like 0, 0. So if I put 0 in for x, is it a true statement? So the opposite of 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. So is it true that 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3? Yes, it is. So I have checked my point. All right, go ahead and try example 2 on your own. 
All right, so this one was a little tricky, so hopefully you were able to work through it. So first of all, is it in slope-intercept form? Yes, it is. What's the y-intercept in the slope? So it's going to start at 1, and it has a rise of 6 and a run of 1. I can also fall 6 and go left 1. And then is it a solid or dashed line? Well, it's just greater than. It's not greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a dashed line. And then I want all the y's that are greater than. So like I talked to you about before, when it's a steep line, it's hard to tell which side is greater than. So I always put my pencil on my y-intercept, and I want y's that are bigger. So I would go up. So this is the side that I shade because that's the side that goes up where the y's are greater than. Even though these points down here look like they're less than the line, they are still above the line because it's angling um, in a positive direction. All right, I'd like you to try um, these two problems as well. So in example three, hopefully you were able to see that it is in slope-intercept form. My y-intercept is at three, and my slope is to rise one, run four, or I can fall one, run to the left four. And it's greater than or equal to. So or equal to means it's a solid line, and I want all the y's that are bigger, so I shade above. All right, number four has just a y. So if it has just a y, that means it's not touching the x-axis. So it has to be parallel to the x-axis. So this right here is where all the y's are less than three, or where they equal three. And so because it's less than, not less than, or equal to, it's a dashed line. Because we're not saying that the y's are three, it's where they're less than three. So that's my boundary line. And I want everything below that, so I shade below. All right, so in example seven, um, is the equation in slope-intercept form? It's not. So I'm going to have to move it around so that it is. So I notice that both x and y are on the left side, so I'm going to move the x over by subtracting x. So I have 4y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 8, because I'm just rewriting it with the x term first. So now I need to get rid of the 4, so I'm going to divide everything by 4, and that cancels. And so I have y is greater than, and I didn't flip the sign because the number that I multiply or divide with is not negative, so remember that. And this is like a negative 1x over 4, so that just becomes a slope of negative 1 fourth x, and then negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So now go ahead and pause the video and finish graphing this. So hopefully you saw that it crosses at negative 2. And then it has a slope of falling 1, running 4, or rising 1 and running to the left 4. And it's a greater than or equal to. So if it's or equal to, it's a solid line. And if it's greater than, I shade above. All right, go ahead and pause the video. And I'd like you to try example 8 on your own. Remember to follow these guiding questions to get you there. So hopefully when you solved the equation for y, you ended up with y is greater than negative 3x plus 1. So my y-intercept is 1. It has a slope of fall 3, run 1, fall 3, run 1. And it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So this is just a boundary line, so it's dashed. And everything above is on this right side. So remember, when it's a steeper line, put your pencil on your y-intercept. And I want everything greater than, so it's up here. So that's the side that I shade. All right, try examples 9 and 10 on your own. All right, so for this one over here, it's just y is greater than or equal to 4. So there's no x in it, so it does not cross the x-axis. And it's greater than or equal to, so it's a solid line, and I shade above. Over here, 4x minus 3y is greater than negative 6. I'm going to put it in slope-intercept form. So I subtracted 4x, and then I divided everything by negative 3. And remember, when I divide by a negative, the inequality sign switches. So negative 4 over negative 3 is a positive 4 thirds, and negative 6 divided by negative 3 is a positive 2. So my y-intercept is 2. I rise 4, run 3. I also fall for, I did not run enough, run 3, fall 4, run 3. So it should be a dashed line right here, I'm sorry. And I shade below because I flipped that sign. All right, so what we're going to do in the lesson is we're going to practice um, the idea of applying inequalities. So you have this worksheet about um, buying some clothes from Justice. So I want you to read through, and you're going to see 
um, what you can do so far. So look for the important information, see if you can make sense of it, and see if you can answer the first two questions on your own. All right, so to do this, I set up um, an inequality. I said that I know that J is going to represent the number of genes because that's what I'm looking for. Um, so that's my unknown. And I know that the genes are 3650 each. So 3650 times J would represent how much she would pay for a certain number of genes. And I know that she has $155. So I said less than or equal to 155. So I said or equal to because she could spend all of her 155 or she could spend less than. So to solve it, I divided by, I took that 155 divided by how much each pair of genes is, and I got that J is less than or equal to 4.2. So I can't buy 0.2 pairs of genes, so I can either buy four or five. Well, if I buy five, it's gonna be over 155. So she can buy four or less pairs of genes for that $155. Whereas question two, I did the same thing, but I did it with the shirts. So it was 1550S is less than or equal to 155, and I divided by 1550, and that came out to be exactly 10. So she can buy 10 or less shirts for $155. All right, let's try example th or let's try question three. So rather than spending the money on just jeans or just t-shirts, the girl decides to spend her money on a combination. So I'm going to put them together. Write an inequality for the total cost of buying J um, J pairs of jeans and T t-shirts. So go ahead and pause and try to write your inequality. So I hope you came up with putting the two together because this would represent how much she spends on jeans and this would represent how much she spends on shirts and still when I put those together she only has $155. So what she spends has to be less than or equal to $155. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put it on a graph. So my equation was that 3650J plus 1550S is less than or equal to 155. So the easiest way to do these word problems is to use my intercepts. So remember we talked about the x-intercept is when y is 0 and the y-intercept is when x is 0. So the intercept of the number of genes is when I spend zero dollars on shirts. So if I put a zero in for shirts, that would give me 3650J equal, is less than or equal to 155, which we did before, and we said that would be four. So she can either buy four pairs of jeans and zero t-shirts, or she can buy 10 t-shirts and zero pairs of jeans. All right, so it's less than or equal to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a solid line because it's or equal to. And it's less than. So I'm going to shade in here. Now, why would we not go below and over here? So I want you to think about that. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Why do we keep it in the first quadrant? So why don't I have a full X and Y and I'm shading everything below? So think about that. And what I can see on here is I can see the different points of combinations of t-shirts and jeans that I can buy that will keep me at or below $155. So when I look at this first example, four t-shirts and three pairs of jeans. So I'm going to find where that would be on the graph. So four t-shirts and three pairs of jeans is going to be right here. So shading represents all of the solutions. Well, that is outside of my shaded area, so no, I cannot. That means that's gonna be more than $155. So go ahead and pause the video and find five t-shirts and two pairs of jeans and see if she has enough money to buy that according to this graph. And then eight t-shirts and a pair of jeans, two t-shirts and three pairs of jeans. All right, so hopefully you saw that she could buy five t-shirts and two pairs of jeans um, because that's going to be in that shaded or equal to part. And two t-shirts and three pairs of jeans is also, but eight t-shirts and one pair of jeans is going to be too much money.